Well, I'm catching up with a stalwart of Manx Broadcasting, uh, David Collister, who I literally can remember when I was only a child up there, he used to come in on my weekends. And I think you had a day job in those days, concrete, wasn't it? And, and, and those sort of things before you actually fully embrace Manx Radio as, as a full-time broadcaster. David? I, I did, yes, yeah. yes. Um, but it was the country music that got yeah. me first interested in uh, talking to anybody, I really. I got really hooked up on country music and it was from that that I sort of moved into the, the radio area with it. Yeah. It just seemed a natural fit. I mean, you, you, you were just so good at it, dare I say. You, you enjoyed, away from the music scene, you, of course, you got into current affairs. Manx Radio's mandate programme. I did, yes, yeah, yeah. Tell us about those days, because those are the days when the politicians didn't get used to having a hard time. No, I think before mandate went on the air, um, they rarely were questioned anyway. And if they were, it was, um, uh, what would you like to say to me about so-and-so? Uh, but, of course, when we came along, uh, it was a matter of... Um, Tr trying to get some hard questions to them, trying mm. to make them give answers that the public needed to hear, you see. And it, it worked out. I mean, initially, um, they were a bit guarded about it, but I think uh, fairly quickly they, um, they realised that uh, it was in their interest mm. to give honest answers and, and not try and be evasive. They were very, very different days in broadcasting, though, weren't they? Yeah, you, it was hands-on, doing everything. Yeah, they, they were, yes. I mean, <laughs> you had no producers. You, had, you were entirely in charge of everything you did yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you made a team with Charles Gard very much yourself. I mean, I joined you briefly. I was a young chap. And it, didn't, it didn't fit me at all, that stage mandate. But you guys uh, were look, very looked after us and that sort of thing. But an important part, I think, you've played in... in Manx Broadcasting, do you accept that you you are that living legend? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't claim that, no. Well, I would. Um, I, would. I, I mean, I've been, I have done a lot of broadcasting, and I think um, really when we brought the political element in, uh, it, it was something that n was needed at that time because um, usually it would be uh, simply asking um, the politicians well, have you anything to say on this issue? Be very polite. Uh, yes. Uh, after that, of course, when we started uh, hitting them a bit with questions, um, it all Change. changed. But it changed for the better, really, from the public point of view, because we were seeking to get answers to questions that the public wouldn't normally get answers for. Mm. So I think it was, uh, it was a good move, and, and it... Um, it, it led to what we now have today, which is a very open uh, parliament and a very mm -hmm. um, approachable members as well in there. How do you think, I mean, it comes in for a lot of stick, I suppose, these days, the, the radio station and the subvention. Do you think it's, it's warranted? How would you see Manx Radio continuing? Do you think there should be a public service broadcaster? Absolutely. Mm -hmm essential to have a public service broadcaster we are a country we're not some little area in in england and um i think the, the public service broadcasting needs to be supported in whatever ways it can but certainly uh i wouldn't like to see that end now you've retired now haven't you because you were doing sunday mornings yeah. up until fairly recently well, i've retired yeah. why uh, I've done enough. <laughs> Simple as that, really. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you come to the stage where you're not offering any anything new, any anything more. You know. Okay. Well, I hope everything goes well for you. Certainly, uh, you've been a very big part of my life uh, with with, <laughs> with radio. And are you still like country music? You still playing your country music music? Yeah. Well, I'm. I don't do the show now, no. but uh, I still like country music. Obviously, I've got a very large collection of CDs and LPs, house full of them. But uh, I, I don't often listen to them now, really. No. How, how are you filling your retirement then? What are you doing? Um, sleeping mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Not going on cruises or things like that. <laughs> no, no. No, nothing uh, like that at all, no. I, I, um, just taking life easy, I suppose you could say. How would you like to be remembered? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I, I once asked a very famous uh, star, well, he wasn't a star, he was an actor, I think, how would you like to be remembered? And he said, I'd just like to have a sign saying, please keep off the grass. 